Radio Sonant joining me at Hill Place in Swanmore. It's just gone 25 to 2. Now, your sprinkling of celebrity stardust comes in the shape of David Walliams this afternoon. You'll know him as one half of the very funny, very cheeky comedy duo of Little Britain and Come Fly With Me. But did you also know that he's an author, a very celebrated author? In fact, he's an award-winning author. And his first book, Mr. Stink, has been made into a stage show with fun puppetry and even a scratch and sniff card for every member of the audience. Who could ask for more than that? I caught up with David a little bit earlier on. I told him he was talking to BBC Radio Solent across Hampshire, Dorset and the Isle of Wight. And I asked him if he's coming to the festival. The Isle of Wight Festival? No, I'd love to go. Who's playing this year? Oh, Kings of Leon. Foo Fighters, it's going to be absolutely huge. Wow, I want from the Isle of Wight. Right. <laughs> but, um, I think if I went to the festival, I'd, I'd uh, get on a ferry. <laughs> Let's crack on anyway and talk about Mr. Stink. Yeah, Mr. Stink is um, it's a children's novel I wrote um, a couple of years ago, and it's been turned into a musical uh, for kids. And um, it's the first ever theatrical production, as far as I know, in Stinkervision. So on the way in, everyone's given a little booklet, and it's a scratch and sniff booklet, and um, at certain times in the show, you're asked to uh, to scratch an area and, and smell things. Sometimes it could be a burp or it could be sweet. And I went to the opening in, in Leicester a couple of weeks ago, and it was amazing to hear all the kids reacting to the smell, so it's hilarious. How important is it that it is suitably disgusting enough for young people? Well, I think, you know, when you're a kid, there's certain things you find funny, and I remember asking kids, you know, which bits of my books they'd liked. And sometimes the answer was, I like the bit where the boy sneezed on the other boy. <laughs> yeah. You think, oh, okay. I mean, it can't all be that, but I do know that, uh, you know, kids love that, that sort of humour. So, um, and I do too. So uh, I love to include it in my, my children's books. I was going to ask you, do you think you ever really grow up from the things that make you laugh when you're young? I hope not, because... Um, you know, it, it shouldn't be too considered laughter. Mm -hmm. No, when you laugh, it is spontaneous. And I think that uh, that's why, you know, probably... Do you remember seeing a picture of Prince Philip on the um, balcony of Buckingham Palace? Yeah. And he was clearly um, breaking wind. Right. And he was laughing. And the guy's nearly 90. <laughs> <laughs> and he still thinks the breaking wind is funny. And uh, as you can see, Prince Harry really laughing too. So I think there are certain things that kind of cross generations. So how does it feel then to sit there, you say you went to the opening in Leicester, and see what is essentially your imagination come to life, but actually this time you're not the one acting it out, you're watching others yeah. do it? I know, it was strange, because I'm used to, to, to normally being part of it, you know, and uh, creating characters and playing them, or not playing them, but, but um, it, was, it was great, it was a real thrill. I mean, you feel like a magician when you kind of write something, and, and there it is in front of you. And, and the production is, is very faithful to the book, but it, I mean, it's bigger and better in a lot of ways because it's got songs and obviously there's actors in, interpreting the lines. I, I, was, I was really thrilled. And I feel a bit weird when I'm actually sort of laughing or, or um, getting a bit teary-eyed at some of the emotional scenes. Because I think, well, hang on, I, I wrote this, you know, surely it's a bit indulgent, <laughs> but I just really was amused by it and, uh, and uh, really moved by it. You've done so much since Little Britain first came onto the screens and you've gone on to prove yourself in so many other areas that, you, you know, there's many strings to the bow. But do, do you find that you, you have to consistently work at shifting people's perception to say, oh, I don't just do this, but I also do that. Um, I don't kind of try and contrive it too much. I just try and do the things I enjoy doing. And I've really loved uh, writing the children's books. And the new one, Billionaire Boy, is just out in paperback. And, and, and so I didn't really do it to change people's perceptions. I just did it because I, I wanted to do it. But I do realise that maybe if you want a long career, um, it's probably best not to just keep doing the same thing over and over again because there's a danger people get bored. And I always admire people who have like a second career, like Michael Palin, mm. you know, having made all the brilliant comedy shows and films he did, and then you know, became this amazing sort of adventurer, you know, traveling the world, around the world in 80 days. And, I, and it gave him a whole new audience. And I think um, that's a really smart thing to do. I've been reading a bit of Billionaire Boy, and uh, it is a, it's a really interesting concept for a story because here he is, Joe Spud, with, with what every kid probably could ever wish for, you know, racing cars and helicopters and cash coming out of his, you know, mattress, and yet all he really wants is some mates. Yeah, I mean, I thought it would be a great um, wish fulfillment, you know, kind of fantasy for kids, because I think one thing kids would probably like is to be really rich, 
and and I suppose this is about the book is really like money doesn't buy you happiness is 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 the is the message of the book and um, yeah it's about his search for for friendship and uh, in a world where you know pretty much everyone knows he's a billionaire you know can he make friends in a normal way or are people just using him um, so. Uh, I, I think it really taps into a lot of things that kids are interested in because I think kids are probably money is something they're interested in and um, and fame as well. Um, and what's the biggest compliment you've had then since you've started making you know stories and shows for children and young people? Because I mean it must be a compliment to have people use your little Britain catchphrases and your come fly with me catchphrases, but children that they're quite tough nuts to crack. Yeah, children are, are not, you know, they're not going to be polite if they didn't like something, you know, that they'll say. The, be the best thing is, I mean, you know, I was in the supermarket the other day and a lady came up to me and said, thank you so much for, for your books. And I couldn't get my son to read um, anything. And then, uh, but, you know, your name on the book and he read it, he really enjoyed it and now he's reading books. And I thought, so it's an amazing responsibility really, which is you're, you're writing the first book that some child um, is going to read and uh, and there are kids now who write to me who've no idea I'm on TV they just completely accept me as a children's author so uh, you know it's a real thrill to, to be doing this too and the lovely thing about books is they're, they're kind of around forever you know TV shows are kind of on and then you know they're off and people tend to forget about them but but you know there are kids now reading a book that I might have written three years ago which is a thrill and obviously kids are still reading Roald Dahl books that some of them were written 40 years ago. Do you know as an adult I would still pick up a Roald Dahl book and read it again? It's just, yeah I know. read, I read uh, a lot of them again recently and uh, I was completely mesmerized by them all over again and it, it was a sort of dangerous thing to do in a way because they're so good yeah. that it almost puts me off because I think, oh, well, it's never going to be as good as one of these books. <laughs> but it's quite inspiring too because I think he gets an amazing tone um, with uh, with his writing. You know, he, he talks about quite dangerous things like mm. uh, George's Marvelous Medicine is about a kid who wants to kill his grandma by poisoning her. Mm. But <laughs> somehow, Rodal can tell it in a certain way that you don't feel offended by that, which is a, a really, a really great uh, skill he has. So how's married life treating you then? It's great, thank you. Are you a married lady? I'm not a married lady. I'm I'm living over the brush, David, to be honest. Oh my god. Me and the man and the dog. Like oh, okay. three and ego. Well, um yeah, it's 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 lovely. I mean I I I kind of, you know, held out as long as I could and then I got <laughs> married and uh, it's uh, it's great. Yeah, I mean, I'd recommend it. It's a nice thing. It feels like, you know, something in your life is resolved, which is nice, you know. David Williams, his show is coming to the south. I'll keep you posted on the dates, but it's definitely going to be on at the Mayflower in Southampton in the not too distant future. His second book, Billionaire Boy, is out in paperback from today. So, look, guide on the way next.